This is the Rebel Scum Podcast. Available in video on YouTube and audio wherever you listen to your podcasts. Every week, Brock and James talk the latest rumors, news, and theories from a galaxy far, far away. Support us on Patreon for exclusive offers and join the Star Wars discussion. Patreon.com slash Rebel Scum Podcast. Here are your hosts, Brock and James. You're always scum. Rebel Scum. James, you know that this week is the 19th anniversary of Revenge of the Sith? Did you not know that? Or am I got, you, I got, you got the movie the, wrong. Is it Clone Wars? Or the, <laughs> the Clone Wars? <laughs> Third time's a charm. Welcome to the Star Wars podcast. Uh, That's pretty cool. Attack of the Clones, right? So next year at Star Wars Celebration, it'll be the 20th anniversary of Attack of the wow. Clones. Wow, wow, wow. Uh, and, and Celebration, since our last recorded, Brock, announced their dates for 2022. Yeah, they moved it from August to May, which I was like, wow, I can't go now. <laughs> you can't go for sure? Well, I could probably go, but I wanted to go with uh, WGR Reham and uh, yeah. you. I don't think I, I don't think I'll be able to attend it either. It was kind of I don't I understand. Yeah. I mean, you know, I guess there's speculation that maybe they're announcing something big, but eh. I mean, look, I'm not gonna lie. I kind of liked April as well for like a hot climate. You know, like let's get the hell out of this cold. It would still ruin your yeah. trip, but um, yeah, I don't think I'll be able to attend that uh, Memorial Day weekend in 2022. Um, oh I, right, it's a, it's a lot. There yeah, which lot. seems like with uh, Comic Con doing Thanksgiving, it seems like these conventions are just like let's take the long weekends. Um, <laughs> even though everyone's got all this vacation time to burn up, give me some days to use. Yeah. Not that we get Memorial Day here in the Great White North, but anyway, we will not be there. I guess Andrew, we'll see if we can ship him off again. <laughs> Plan it up. I like it's going to be a fun time for everybody there. There should be some cool announcements, and I hope just like last time that they give people in attendance, um, what's it called, exclusive screeners or yeah, yeah, things yeah. to watch because it you know as much as when you're not there you're like it's not fair. It is fair. They spend hundreds yeah. and hundreds of dollars, in some cases thousands of dollars, to attend, and uh, I think uh they should be offered something exclusive for being there that's more than just a hasbro figure that they're not going to get their hands on <laughs> it would be it might it might be better too virtually because like look at the last year of us being virtual like perhaps you know it's not I, I know a lot of things are going back to normal uh especially in the states but like i think there is still a value of like oh we can't get this person here today but we can get them today if we let them video conference in like it's uh perhaps that will that will improve sort of the situation uh <laughs> then you like well george lucas won't come to anaheim but <laughs> yeah they're to drive the the It'll video few hours. yeah yeah I, I, yeah i hope they do i hope there is an all immersive event that is for i think dc fandom is coming back this year they announced yeah. I thought they knocked that out of the park. I can't see why Star Wars can't do something like that. Again, though, if it's in person, you don't want to diminish the value of being oh, absolutely. there at all. I mean, and, and I mean that from an experience of a consumer being there, but also um, who puts it together? What, what's like, what are they called? Uh, uh, Read Pop. Read Pop. Like, Read Pop. If Read Pop is like, well, it'll all be online, then why am I going to the next 2024 Star Wars celebration or whenever they decide to do it? Why am I going to shell out the money when I can just when I know I could stay home and watch it? Now there is one thing, Brock, that you brought up last year when when I think around this time last year when we we're trying to figure out if celebration was happening or not before they officially canned it was is there potential for them to say it's all online if you pay X amount of dollars you get the virtual pass opposed to the travel pass because that that is something. That I think would be very intriguing, not just to you and I who can't make it next May, or Canadians, or or Eastern Amer Eastern Americans, 
but people overseas that just are like the airfare, you know, this and that, or they don't feel that, you know, it's, it's a year away. Maybe they're still not comfortable traveling. It, there's something to be said for a virtual pass where you get that exclusive uh, thing that people are getting in there. Not necessarily the same experience because you're not with everybody, but you get, you get those little bits. The problem is, I guess, how do you stop people from, from recording it? But well, that's not my problem to figure out. That's Lucasfilms. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a good question. I don't know. It's, I mean, how do you stop people from recording when they're in there live? Which like it happens. There's always someone that has their phone out or something. So yeah, I don't know. But yeah, it's uh, twenty it's exciting. Years. What, how did we even get on? Nineteen that? years oh, of yeah. Attack of the Clones. Which right, yeah, do you yeah. remember the the first time in the theater or you saw Attack of the Clones? Do you remember that? Do you have a vivid memory of that? really i know i saw it in the theater but like i would have been a teenager right when did it come out 19 yeah. years ago 19. i'm 37 <laughs> yeah so i would have been like 16 15 16 or 17 uh i must have saw it. i couldn't i can't i <laughs> couldn't tell you a thing about it <laughs> I saw it. it I absolutely do it was the same year Spider-Man came out and um, I was in Niagara College and, and college ends at the end of April so Spider-Man came out and a bunch of friends from Niagara came down to Brampton where I was living to watch Spider-Man and the deal was I would go there to watch Star Wars on the midnight show it was kind of like a crisscross so I watched Star Wars in, in, uh, in Welland the Seaway <laughs> Mall at midnight, back in the midnight showings, and I've said this numerous times, but it was the first time I saw a Star Wars film where I was very underwhelmed coming out of it. <laughs> I, I, and I realized years later that it was it was twofold. It was part of, partially the movie, but partially because I was on the Force.net every day that year, or two years, reading spoilers on the movie. So the movie was, I knew what was happening. Like I knew every, I was like, it's going to, I knew it was going to start like this. I knew the, I knew everything from the tilt up instead of down. Like I, all of that was, was put out there on, on the chat forums on the site. And that definitely, and the thing is, even though it plays out exactly how you read it, it's different than you visualize it. So it can never match it because I'm like, well, this is going to happen. And then you're like, well, that's not how it, it worked out. Like, that's not how Corday died in my mind. It was this and that. <laughs> and then I saw it again a few weeks later with my parents because my dad was like, we got to I was like, okay. So we went to go see it with my parents and I liked it a thousand times more. It was, it was like a whole, it was like I watched it for the first time that time. It was just this weird, surreal experience where I went to go see this movie a second time, which I already saw and I was underwhelmed by it. I didn't not like it. I was underwhelmed. Like, oh, I felt like it could have been. And then I saw it again. I was like, wow, I really like, like, I was just like, I really liked it. And then I remember talking to my parents. They were like, that was really good. My, my mom likes every Star Wars movie. My dad says he does, but he hated all the sequel movies. <laughs> <laughs> and But he liked the prequel movies. Like, he genuinely liked Attack of the Clones, Revenge of the Sith, and Phantom Menace. Because I think he saw Phantom, I think Phantom Menace is one of the few movies that he's seen twice in the theater. Like it was, But it was just like, the, the second time I saw it, though, was like watching i think because all expectations were put aside now and i knew what i was getting into and i just watched it and i was like this is so much more fun and i've said this a million times on this podcast and other podcasts where when i think of star wars for whatever reason my head my brain goes to the chase on coruscant and anakin jumping out of the yellow speeder <laughs> it's just, that's just where my head goes for star wars now that that moment, whatever the reason, even though I grew up with Ewoks and Carbonite and all that stuff, that moment is the first thing that pops to mind when I hear Star Wars. <laughs> nice. That was 20 years ago almost. <laughs> I'm an old man, wow. which is why I hate Brie Larson. <laughs> I'm sorry. By the way, there was an article on one of those bogus websites that said Lucasfilm wants Brie Larson for Mary Jane. And Brock, have we not like reached the point where, is that just satire at this point? Like, I don't, is there the obsession, we've talked about this a little bit, but the obsession with people who hate 
the Disney era of Star Wars and their equal hate of Brie Larson and combining them into the... Like, there's no connection with Brie Larson and Star Wars other than she loves Star Wars. <laughs> That's what I don't get. It's like, 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 literally, if Tom Hanks was like, I love Star Wars, I'm like, I hate Tom Hanks. And then the next like five years of my life is making YouTube videos about Tom Hanks joining Star Wars. Like that's, it makes no, there's no yeah. connection to them at all. Uh, that being said, Donald Faison and Zach Braff need to do a Star Wars spinoff show. <laughs> Donald Faison's already in the Star Wars universe, so it's all good. Uh, but he could play the live action version and Zach yeah. Braff can play someone else as well. <laughs> I'm pitching. My dog is barking. Um, um, what are we talking? Yeah, yeah. I don't. Know. I just. It is. It. It is dumbfounding when you like, look at news, look up in the news, and it's just like article after article is like, why? Uh, yeah, there was something I was saw this week where it was just like, um, it's like this. This might happen in the Mandalorian, similar to the flub of Wandavision. I'm like, flub of Wandavision? Like, what was wrong with Wandavision? All of a sudden, I'm like, I swear that they're just making things up at this point. Uh, uh, yeah, honestly, oh, uh, it's I. W this is not Star Wars related, but similar. It's like last week, I think Emily Blunt was like, oh yeah, on the internet or an interview. She's like. Nobody from Marvel has called me or my husband. That's all internet. So it's like maybe any like until you. Oh, who who was it? I was. Uh, oh, it was uh, the the showrunner for Falcon and Winter Soldier was on Kevin Smith's podcast, uh, Fat Man Beyond, and said if Kevin Feige, he, I mean he's off the not tech officially saying it. He's like, but he said. If Kevin Feige doesn't say it, it's not happening. <laughs> and that was related to like uh, when, uh, Captain America 4. So mm -hmm. it's just like, it's sort of like, even though the internet's ablaze with all this, it's just like, well, I, truly, heard, like yeah. I heard a lot of TV showrunners and movie people don't want to do the Marvel shows because they're like, there's a showrunner and his name is Kevin Feige. And they said, I think that was spun negatively, but in the interview he actually said it was anonymous, but he said, that's not necessarily a negative. It's just, it is what it is. And you're, you're definitely working for somebody. So yeah. you don't go in there to do your own thing, which I think has been evident about Marvel since Captain America and Thor, Thor for sure, which is like nine, wow. eight, nine, ten 10 years ago now. In this same interview, I forget his first name. His last name is Spellman. He he was the showrunner for yeah. Falcon Winter Soldier. Um, he said, I can't remember what their titles are, like executive producers or whatever. Like every project that Marvel makes has one person devoted that is like part of Feige's team or whatever. I forget what the term is like it's a it's a, a title that you would be like oh they work on several projects mm -hmm. they don't they work on one project at a time but but it's like it's like a tree yeah. right it's a oh, pyramid sure. it's a pyramid scheme which starts with five on the top yeah. but then but it doesn't that make sense like i and i'm not yeah. going to argue that for star wars at all because i think star wars is a different thing we can get to that another time and maybe yeah. it does work for star wars but right now i'm not thinking that but for marvel it's got it's got to make sense because if you're if you're doing Captain America and then da, 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 like you saw like Captain America two or uh, Captain America, Iron Man two, I haven't seen in forever, but I remember another that was another movie that I was underwhelmed by. I think because the first one was so good, but the second one felt like oh they're pushing the the narrative of of the you, you could feel like they were pushing the, yeah. the universe right, but again, and I haven't seen the movie in years, so I don't know if it holds up. I have no idea. I I don't know, but you you they needed that push to get us to the next step and now sometimes it feels like they're pushing and sometimes there's ant-man which kind of comes out of left field and then you're like oh no but it connects perfectly with all the other like it's just like ant-man 2 when he gets sucked in the van at the end of the movie like well that was weird and then in an end game when he comes back you're like oh you know, everything makes complete like like it's like yeah, yeah. it's such a small little detail that's like a tease at the end of something you know that could be you know, it's like, I know what you did last summer ends with, I still know. And then the guy jumps out at her, but it doesn't mean anything. It's just like a fun little, but this, like you need those pieces there. Even if it's something really small, I think that, I think that's really smart. 
Yeah. I mean, you can't, you can't, like, going back to Star Wars, it's like, you can't make these fans happy anyway. It's like, they spent, uh, I mean, how many years did we say they spent hating the prequels? Mm-hmm. And now, like, it's 19 years after uh, Attack of the Clones, and apparently Twitter exploded with people just like, yay. Yeah, I well, I. <laughs> Look, we were at Celebration in, in Florida, yeah. in Orlando, and I, you know I love uh, Hannah Christensen, Anakin Skywalker is my fan. You know, a big fan. He came out on stage, everybody was cheering. You know there was people yeah, that exactly. hated, just, they no hated him and like, bashed him. He was like, give me a break. You guys are fake. Like, <laughs> there's, there are, there... Now, it's great that you appreciate him and you're in person, blah, blah, blah. But I mean, you know, but also at the same time, 20 years goes by, things change, people's opinions change, and... And you know, and also you know, young kids who grew up with them—they don't care about the acting; they care about the movie. And if they grew up liking the movie, they're gonna—they're gonna like that. So I don't know. I, I feel like right now, though, with Star Wars and the well, the Disney era, this post George Lucas is really what it is. I, I said this, I think, last week or yeah. a couple weeks ago. I really feel like now, especially watching Bad Batch, you know, you got all these things that they've. But given us since the sequels, it's like I feel like they've finally figured it out. Like not maybe as a grand scheme thing, but they've kind of now they're they've settled in. I, I should say settled in is what I should say. They kind of settled into Star Wars and appreciated uh, the what Star Wars is as opposed to what they wanted it to be which i think was the marvel thing and i think because of that though they're going to get to the marvel thing it's just going to it's just going by a different route to get there because i i, I that's how i feel i feel like they they were trying to get to marvel like what, how marvel was doing like everything is connected that and it just was like i don't know about that but now they've kind of figured star wars out and because they figured star wars out that's going to allow them to do what they initially wanted to do in a way that's going to feel even less force into being a shared quote unquote universe and all that. Right, 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 right. Yeah. Not to, so, and that's not sorry. That's not like a, a a spite at the at the at the sequel trilogy. It is more a the connections of everything. I think yeah, yeah, yeah. I think they tried to connect it all too soon without realizing what they were connecting is what I'm trying to say. I think they were like even with books, oh, I'm yeah, talking yeah. books, comics, movies, everything. It was just like everything's connected. And you're like, but you don't know what you're connecting yet. And now I kind of <laughs> feel like they I think yeah. I think now because they did all that, they're like, okay. You know, it's almost like a fresh start. It feels like Mandalorian might have been like a fresh start on their connective tissue. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm hate me when and uh, talking about that it's like bad batch you finally watched it yeah i saw the third episode last night oh right we you did see the first one last time so what what do you think so far the fir- i thought the first episode was the 70 minute one which you know i dread yeah. long episodes was i told this to aaron actually and she's kind of interested in watching now i think if that was live action that would yeah. that would be i think it would be a lot of people's top for sure, it would be up. To, it would definitely be. It would probably overtake a lot of Mandalorian episodes, in a, and it might even be better. And episode two, I admittedly fell asleep during, not because it was boring, because it was very late. Um, but then I felt like I didn't really miss anything, so I didn't go back and watch it. Because <laughs> also I'm lazy and it's been really warm outside. <laughs> the third episode, I wanted to watch it, but again, it's I don't watch a lot of TV in the summertime like a lot of people. So, And it's been like yeah. really hot lately and I don't want to be inside. So I've been outside a lot and I just didn't watch it. And so I, last night at like 1030, I forced myself to. The sun was gone. I was like, I'm watching it. So I put it on. Wow. That wasn't what I expected at all. <laughs> I'm still not sure what I make of like the Omega storyline yet. Like I'm, that's like. Yeah. Like I'm still like what? But uh, Sniperhead, I'm like, dude, it's, <laughs> it's, a, it's a cartoon, and he like shot. Po- spoiler alert! But he was yeah. shooting people like point blank, and I was like, oh, this took a turn. But it, but it was like, it kind of as much as it took a turn. I'm like, this is like as a kid, this is probably what I would have watched. <laughs> like this is what we watched in the '80s was people. Yeah, there's yeah. no blood. You know, it's just bomb, and you don't really see them get shot, but you know they do. And I'm like, oh, this is this is the Empire, though. That's what it is. And I love the one thing I was saying to Aaron 
tell me how you feel about this is i love that this series as much as it's about the bad batch this other portion where it's like why the empire does not want to use clones versus using clones. And I'm like, I love that dynamic because that's something that I've been wondering <laughs> myself is like, why would they switch from that? And they're getting into it. And I, and I, I just, I love, I love that Loki came in and he's like, these are my death troopers. Look at them or whatever they were. Loki yeah, like from the Marvel uh, movies. Yeah. Yeah. Cause it's like, it is true. It's like, how can you shoot things with want? Like, they just don't care. Like, right? And it's like, it's coming from Tarkin, who, I mean, I need, maybe I should rewatch his initial episodes in Clone Wars. I do remember him being just like ruthless, right? Like, mm-hmm. and it's amazing. Like, a, a character that we only see, I mean, it's sort of explaining is like, how can a man be okay with blowing up an entire planet and you're like ah okay so yeah like, this is really filling that out um i honestly when i saw that scene of them all wearing black stormtrooper i didn't even like clock that it's like oh they're like death troopers like, i don't know troopers. if they were but i'm saying they were because i love the death troopers yeah. but uh i'm i'm all f- i'm i'm not against it I'm like sure um but it's like it's i it's more like it's important that it's like this is how controlling the empire is that they're just like go do it i don't care just get it done <laughs> and like that's why yeah the clone like the way that crosshair is work because they're they keep messing with his uh inhibitor chip mm-hmm. or control chip or whatever it's called like it's like yeah you, they these these clones are bred to obey everything so it's like if you push it in the right direction it's like oh so uh uh, it's a really interesting guy. It's going to be really dramatic when he inevitably either faces off against the Bad Batch or or joins them again. It's going to be like, wow. Um, I kind of feel like we're going to get both. But that being said, they, yeah. could, they could throw us for a loop. It's uh, You know what? I know this has probably have already been like debunked, but like when they show the, the, the first – stormtroopers that he's training and there's the asian woman i'm like is that fennec shan but i I looked it up i think like they showed her what she looks like though in the trailer you don't see her face doesn't really look like um oh gosh what's uh, ming na ming na wen i saw a picture of an animation of that looks more like her i mean but looking at the trailer like fennec shan is jumping around like i was like oh wouldn't that be crazy if she is trained by crosshair who is also like she is a sharpshooter and he is a sharpshooter i mean at least in mandalorian her weapon of choice is a (coughs) sharp that's kind of brilliant actually it might work but i don't think it's the case and then i think i I mean well she could come in later on too like he might get a new new bad batch of i but i i I feel like she's just gonna come in and be like already yeah, she's already like she's a young bounty hunter or whatever. Yeah. Like she's, but she'll be established. It won't be like, oh, I get this isn't the empire is ru- truly evil, blah blah blah. But like that still wouldn't work because it's like people that leave the empire typically <laughs> go to the rebellion or something like that, right? They don't be like, well, maybe I can benefit off them now. <laughs> but who knows? Uh, so that's what I thought when I saw that scene. Uh, I it's 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 really wild like how (laughs) four characters that all kind of sound the same it's like yeah this is an engaging conversation of sorts because like basically tech and echo kind of sound exactly the same and they're in scenes together a lot (laughs) yeah and well wrecker is the only one that sounds really different well and uh and sniper guy has more of a he's a little bit yeah what are you doing that's not how he sounds at all. Great show though, like absolutely, like just like it, it grabs you. It's entertaining. I and love then, how much they're showing the Kaminoans, like how they're like yes. realizing like their time is is up, and it's like I'm really interested to nervous. see how that plays out. I'm nervous for them as a species. <laughs> yeah, like, absolutely. Like, because I've been like, why haven't we seen them? I want to see more of them. And I'm like, oh my god. Is yeah. this, like, are they going to blow this planet up? With <laughs> what's that? Are they going to wipe them all out somehow? They're going to gas the the planet. Are there any out anywhere anywhere else? Where's Jar Jar? That's all. I have so many questions. It's also interesting that like 
th- like the Bad Batch are considered like for the clones. They're like they they're not one of us. They're faulty or whatever. Yeah. But the Empire looks at them as like, oh, these are specialized. Because I think they because weren't aren't they specialized? Like weren't they given they are, special like, traits? So like everyone else thinks they're defective, but really yeah. they were probably bred to be something greater. Yeah. Yeah. So they're heightened in the, to an extent. It's just, but like in the four episode arc, and even the in this show, it's sort of pointing out that like they don't fit in with the mm-hmm. rest of the clones, even though they're like they're begr- like they can live on in Camino, but like they're like begrudgingly allowed back in. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> so it's just like it's very very interesting. But in this show, you're like, oh, it's it's good that they're also. My thought is like because like Omega is very like. Sh- stra- shrouded in mystery right yeah. like you meet her she's like i'm the assistant to the head nurse or the doctor or whatever so it's like oh perhaps she's like she'll be the medic of the group or whatever you want to call it but i'm getting the sense that perhaps her heightened ability is she's like a chameleon that like when she's around other people she picks up on their traits because like in that in the third episode she's just like oh i'm a very good tracker all of a sudden like or, or like I mean, she's also a clone bred to be, uh, like, a soldier. So mm. even though she's a little girl, it doesn't mean, like, she doesn't have these traits. I mean, Boba, Boba Fett and all the, the, the kid versions of, of, uh, the, of uh, what's his name, Django, in, the, in Clone Wars, at least, is like, yeah, they, they, they know what they're doing. They're, <laughs> so it's like, but I had that thought in this episode. I was like, huh, because it's like, Maybe it's more of a surprise, like when Crosshair is almost shooting them when they're escaping Camino. Like she's able to like surprise him, like with pretty decent shots. So I don't know. I don't know, just a thought I had. I, I think I have to rewatch that episode again and be like, there was something about like for someone that's never left Camino. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she's to be able to te- yeah. deal with this weird creature. It's like, who? I thought so. her her um her trait was going to be that she's Snoke. <laughs> Omega. Omega. Oh, Omega. 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 Hello, it's kick. <laughs> I, yeah, great. I'm, yeah, I'm really curious where that character goes. Sometimes it feels like they're doing the Baby Yoda thing, which is also what they were saying yeah. about the, the Obi-Wan scripts originally, that it was too similar to the Mandalorian because of like, the child. I'm like, what? Is, like, Lucasfilm and Child, man. They've got something going on. Mad Max Road Warrior. Speaking of Obi-Wan Kenobi. Hmm. Uh, him himself, he himself, Ewan McGregs, McGregor was on the Jimmy, one of the Jimmy shows. I don't know which one. I think it was Kimmel. It was Kimmel, I want to say. And um, on May 4th, he shot a scene with an actor or actress that he had never worked with before. And he was very excited to work with them. And they said it was very special to do it on May 4th. And they shot on it together. No one knows who it was. Um, any any uh, speculation on your part as to who that might have been? Shot something with someone he's never worked before. So I would take. So this is going to be one of our odds, and every time of the odds, but I would say that that removes because people are like, "It's hey, Aiden Christensen." It's like, well, he did two movies with him. <laughs> yeah, like he, so said, not, he said, hasn't worked. That's what he said. He said it's somebody new. Yeah, that he hasn't worked with. Huh. I mean, I guess I could be anybody. <laughs> I has he ever worked? He's like, has he ever worked with Meryl Streep? <laughs> no, but I think it's. It, well, I think he was insinuated because it was May the Fourth that they specifically made it very oh, Star Warsy for that. And look, I'm not gonna lie, Forrest Whitaker. He's, <laughs> it's just always Saw Guerrera. Every yeah. time they have a chance to do something, like bring in Saw, he, Forrest Whitaker's on speed dial. Where do you need me? <laughs> By the way, Ant Man, like Stanley, and all the Marvel movies. Exactly, <laughs> Forrest Whitaker's going to Stanley. I'm fine with that too. Oh, Ant Man, yeah. Quantum of Silas or whatever. It's being shot on the volume. I don't know if you saw that. I... Yeah, yes. Quantum Yeah, whatever it's called, the Quantum of Solace. That's a James Bond movie. <laughs> That's but, awesome. Yeah, I'm the glad volume is that, like they're using that. So it's funny that James Cameron complained about Force Awakens how it didn't up technology and then Mandalorian's like no Star Wars still has, Star Wars still has its place in the history books for technology don't you worry 
I mean, it's it's changing movies for sure. And you and McGregor actually talked about shooting on that versus the green screen. He goes, the thing that's great is you feel like you're on set. It's like you yeah, feel yeah. like you're somewhere, whereas before it's like you had to make everything up. So it's such it's such cool technology. It's wild, yeah, for, especially for someone like him who's experienced the old ways yeah. in Star Wars. Like, I think it's. And I don't his, think he appreciated what was going on back then, but I think now that he's older and he's done all this, he, yeah, I think he yeah. understands. Like, okay, like, not that he didn't understand, but now it's like, well, we we needed that to get to this. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, that's gonna be interesting. Like, uh, when uh, the show comes out and like he's able to interview, say all these things in interviews, it's like, oh wow, it's gonna be real. Like. I'm sure they'll do the behind the scenes, you know, the gallery for Obi Wan or whatever yeah, yeah. you want to call it. Like, I mean, they keep doing it with every single thing they release. Like, there was, I still haven't watched the Falcon Winter Soldier. I think it's just called Assembled. Like, it's like, that's genius. Like, mm-hmm. It's just like, here, here. Like, I think that's what I, I, I said it before. Like, I like about Disney Plus is like, they're like, well, we have all this footage and we are specific, like, here's our brand and here are all the little things we make. It's like, just put it all out. Don't put it on YouTube, put it on here. Right. So, exactly. uh, yeah. So, yeah. Um, I'm up for it. Bring it. Let's do it. I hope, you know, yeah. I, I was thinking about Obi-Wan a little bit though. And it's like, it's going to be a little bittersweet because this probably will be the end of you and McGregor as Obi-Wan Kenobi. I would assume, I guess like, but do we need more Obi Wan? No, you know I mean I know like we always say that. But it's just like, no, we don't. We because I don't even like this show as cool as it's going to be as much as I'm looking forward to it. I I I don't need it. Like as person, and I know they worry about what I want personally, but I like it's not <laughs> necessary because we see a very almost a beginning of Obi Wan when it matters, and then we see the end of Obi Wan when it matters, and so this part is like, why does it matter? And I don't know. I mean, I'm sure it will, but it doesn't right now, unless you give me, I mean, you could argue either one of those, I guess, but you know what I mean? So I don't think this is necessary, but it should be fun. And it'll be nice to see him back as uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi. Oh yeah. I'm, I can't wait till we see a trailer. Like, <laughs> I, I hope think Jack it's going to be like, wow. I hope Jack Black's in it. <laughs> as Grievous. <laughs> um, yeah, because, like, would this be the first? No, I guess it'll be the first time they go back to an old Star Wars story with an actor that was in it, right? Like, technically, they've done that with Solo, but those were all new actors, right? Um. Well, I guess Rogue One had... I mean, had do, do you count the sequels, I guess? I guess you do, but, like... I don't know. You know what I mean? Like it's sort of like well, it's yeah, it's different because the sequels were yeah. a continuation, whereas this is a side story. Yeah, like yeah. Solo, like like as much as I love Solo, man, it was too. It was a couple years yeah. too early. Like just like it, on Disney Plus, it would explode. You know? Yeah, um, yeah, exactly. It was a, it was just it was too soon, and now, now they they've gone completely silent on Solo. Just I think they want it's to forget like, it and. As much as they brought back Leia and Han and and uh, Luke in the the sequels, I mean, I guess you could argue, fight against me on this. Is like they don't really build out the characters. You know what I mean? Like you, you get you, know, you get oh, Leia and Han got married, had a son, and their marriage fell fell apart because he went evil. Like that's basically it of character development, right? Mm-hmm. This will be like. I don't know. Maybe maybe I'm just running in circles here. It's like I feel like this will feel different. I I don't know why. Maybe it's because you and McGregor is like not super old like they are. So it's just sort of like, well, they're just gonna walk into the scene and do stuff. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I know. I know exactly what you're saying. I think some right? people would disagree on some of it, but I think oh, absolutely. There's sure. yeah the. Well, the original characters were used as they were supporting characters in the sequels. Yeah. Even when Luke is in Last Jedi, he's supporting Rey. Yeah. And to an extent, Kylo. So, they're, yeah. Whereas they're this is going to be the a, main focus. They're not at all. Um, 
and this is going to be Obi Wan is going to be the main focus. So that yeah, yeah, I, I mean, yeah. This is the this is the yeah. first time they've gone back and they've picked. I mean, they do it in comics all the time, but it's gonna be it's gonna be curious to see because again, this is I mm-hmm. I have no idea what the story would be. Yeah. His story's been told. I, I I've never been curious about what he did uh, those twenty yeah. years in between. I'm going to be, but I never have been, and that doesn't mean I'm not excited. But it's just it's it's um mm-hmm. I don't know. I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to what they see. And Deborah Chow obviously crushed her episodes of the first season of Mandalorian, so I'm very excited to see what she has in store for all four to six episodes, however many they're going to be of Obi Wan <laughs> Kenobi, because we don't know. And honestly, it doesn't matter as long as it's a full coherent yeah. story. It could be one episode or seven. It just it's. Just yeah. Tell me the story that you're going to tell me. Bring it. Deliver it. Odds? Yeah. Sir, the possibility of successfully navigating an asteroid field is approximately 3,720 to 1. Never tell me the odds. Let's do it. Never tell me the odds brought to you and me and James by our Patreons. If you'd like to support us, if you like what we do, come on down to patreon.com slash rebelscumpodcast and you can check out how you can contribute to this madness that we call a podcast and become one of the lauded few that we uh, recite their names every episode. And they are Heidi Fetter, executive producer, Barry Brophy, Dennis Allen, Randy Kenobi, Mary Kristen Aton, Jeff Wilson, Phil Stanifor, Sooner Thron, Scott Bean, Josh Price, Matt W. Rez! Frank Perkins, Neil Lowry, D. Raven, Spencer, Cosmic Girl, Zero Two, Gleek Play One, Disney Desi, Charlotte, Kayla Davis, Aaron Quinton, Den and Nerds, and the girls with Sabres. That's their theme song. Wonderful, I heard they're wonderful. actually going to make that their theme song next week. <laughs> Hot off the presses. <laughs> girls with Sabres. Uh, thank you to all that support us. You're wonderful and... It's just nice to know that people think we're great. Well, none of them My think mom, we're great. on the other hand, is like, I will not support you in life or on Patreon. And I'm like, shut up, mom. <laughs> Your mom sent me a very interesting gift the other day. <laughs> Did she? <laughs> it's your Sorry. mom sending, yes, me a, and. <laughs> sending, you a, sending me a gift. Uh, here we go. Never tell me that was the first time Ewan McGregor filmed the scene with Rosario Dawson. Did Ewan McGregor film a scene with Rosario Dawson playing Colonel, playing Ahsoka Tano? Yeah. Um, I'm going to go 54% though. I think I we've said it before. That would be great. But I don't know if they would. There is a relationship between the characters in the show in uh, Clone Wars, but like, it's not the. It's like it, I would expect her to be. I would expect Plo Koon to show up in her show somehow, rather than Obi Wan Kenobi, right? Yeah, I think uh, I'm gonna go full Brock. Ooh, but because she's getting her own show. Yeah, and I just feel like the more you sprinkle her in, the more people will be like, "Oh yeah, it's a so-. like just and not us fans, the casual fans who saw her in that one episode of The Mandalorian." Yeah, and and because she knows Kenobi, and because they're both alive, the thing is, I guess you can't, you shouldn't really give up the Anakin as Vader. But of course, at that point, Obi Wan might not even know that Anakin is Vader because I don't, he never mm. really. Does he know in Revenge of the... Did we talk about this and we were wrong last time? But I don't think he's referred to in front of Kenobi as Darth Vader in Revenge of the Sith, which is not 20 years old. It's 16 years old. So I'm wondering... Anyway, I'm going to go full Brock because I think it's an intriguing idea. I don't think it's an it's a, an essential story. Pop, but I also know what the story is. And if he needs another Jedi... She's out there. She's really the only one out there for him, other than Yoda, who's on Dagobah. Yeah. And it could have been Puppet Yoda that he acted. No, he acted with Puppet Yoda in Phantom Menace. Okay, here we go. Our next <laughs> odd, uh, Ewan McGregor filmed the scene with James Earl Jones. Did James Earl Jones 
stand on set while Hayden Christensen <laughs> performed and delivered the lines as, as Darth Vader. Because he did it with uh, him in the, in the other movies. Yeah, that's right. Like, I would love that, but it's just sort of like... Why? James Earl Jones is older. I'm not <laughs> saying he can't do the voice anymore, but I'm just saying, like, uh, especially in COVID. Yeah, like, that's the thing. Like, Michael I'm Keaton doesn't want to... Michael Keaton doesn't want to do Batman because of COVID. James Earl Jones is like, yes, oh, bring yeah. me there. I will go. Yes, it's, Yes, I'm... <laughs> Well, into my 90s. I yeah, mean, he's uh, like, let's just all go. Where are you shooting it? <laughs> Toronto? Oh, right. That's not a hot spot. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to go 10%. Uh, I want that to happen. That would be cool. Though it still seems unnecessary outside of respect between actors. It's just sort of, he's a voice. He doesn't need yeah, to I'm be a, in the room. I'm going to go 30%. I hope, I hope we hear his, we better hear his voice if, if Vader speaks. Um, I don't want the battle from no offense, but I don't want the battle from voice for Vader. I want James Earl Jones. If I'm paying top dollar for Disney Plus, which is like seven dollars a month, I want Primo Vader. <laughs> and our final odd, Omega is connected to Ray. <laughs> when I read this, I was like, "Ah, oh, get out of here!" But like, we really don't know the story of why. Palpatine has a son or children or whatever. And Palpatine's always been like connected with clones. So it's like, and Snoke being a clone, like, or, or whatever you want to call it. They've had different versions of Snoke. Like, I don't hate it. Uh, mm -hmm. I could, I, I, it, I hate to say that like him just having clone children is the whole whole uh uh what do you call it uh uh, uh sorry <laughs> I'm really, i guess i'm tired the whole explanation of how ray comes about it's not terrible <laughs> so uh i want to go 30 percent because it's just like we need to stop <laughs> going back to this like ray doesn't need to be anybody they literally say that in the movie even though they wreck on it in the third movie <laughs> Um, so I'm going to go, what did I, did I say? 20%? I'm going to go 20%. So you say they retconned in the third movie. I think they retconned it in the second movie oh, to make fair. her a nobody. Whatever, however you want to look at it. Yeah. I think the whole sequel trilogy is a retcon of itself. <laughs> <laughs> like the prequels were too. Who are we kidding? That's the beauty yeah. of Star Wars is they make things up as they go. I, look, the only thing is though, is this movie directly connects to the original trilogy and which directly connects to the sequel trilogy so if everything's going to be in there then everything then the sh yeah. th it makes sense for there to be a purpose i'm going to go 45 percent only because i already did a full brock once today and i don't feel like doing mm -hmm. it again um because i don't i don't necessarily think she will but i mean when you're talking clones and ray's partly clone it not a horrible idea and we're all looking for more information on everything that happened in those three movies later on and, and Mandalorian already did a great job with that one episode kind of signaling Snoke and, and like what they were doing that they could that, that that Omega could be directly related to what we're learning in the Mandalorian is happening in the yeah. Mandalorian which of course would connect to what's happening with the Chief EP which would bring Ray's father which would bring Ray so yeah. she, so six degrees of Kevin Bacon could she could be connected yeah. to Ray it, it raises the question of like, can you clone the force? Right. Oh. Cause it's like, I mean, if you use the right, the right, uh, DNA, <laughs> Metachlorians back at it again. Like, could you hypothetically grow a Jedi or a Sith in a jar? But I mean, we do need to remember that Omega is supposed to be a female version of, Jango Fett, which I think we forget because she doesn't look exactly like. But it's it, but it would like, be. Like, let's be honest. That is the point. It would be kind of cool if Jango Fett was like Ray was part Jango. Yeah, sure, exactly. Only because I like uh, Jango yeah, Fett. <laughs> it's I, I wouldn't mind going down the path to figure that out. Uh, it could work. No, absolutely. Um, but we'll see. We'll see what they're trying to do. I mean, we don't even know what the, what her storyline is. So, yeah, bring yeah. it, bad bacheroos. All right, you want to go to mm -hmm. the news? Let's do it. 
Holla news, da 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 da, holla news, da 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 da, holla da 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 do 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 do. I like low on that one. Do 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 do. Okay, my mic is loud. It's just, if anybody wants that, it's two ninety nine on iTunes and Spotify. You can only listen to it on the free version. <laughs> holla news, the news you need to know right now. Uh, the world getting back to normal. Disney World, I believe Disneyland. Yeah, they're both open. People are getting back to the parks. You don't have to wear a mask when you're outside. But so Disney is dropping some cool exclusives. Specifically, you can go to Disneyland Resort and get your own dark saver. That's right. Uh, for $200, you can head on down to Galaxy's Edge in Anaheim and Instead of getting your typical Luke or Darth Vader saber, you can get the dark saber. And then no one was expecting this, but apparently a Disney vlogger saw it and bought it. And yeah, two hundred dollars U.S. dollars, you can have it. That is very tempting because it is very unique looking. So if you're in, uh, you have the ability to go to the parks to check it out and spend some of your hard-earned cash. We talked about you and McGregor earlier today. But now he uh, is talking a lot more about Obi Wan Kenobi. He really, uh, he revealed the truth that about re- reprising his Obi Wan Kenobi that he's saying it feels good to be back. Uh, he told CBS Sunday Morning he can't tell much, but he said he said this. What's interesting is that for a while you had to sit on even saying that you were coming back. I mean, people have been asking. It. And so he said that was annoying. Uh, Every interview I ever did for years, people would say, well, are the rumors true? And he'd have, and he said, and I'd have to sort of, I'd have to lie and have to say, well, you know, I don't know. I'd be happy to play him one day again. I'd have to just keep saying, it started looking like I was sort of asking Disney for a job. So he's saying he's relieved that he can now finally talk about being Obi-Wan again. And that's exciting. Uh, And it's not really, Star Wars news, but Star Wars adjacent has been revealed that Attack the Block will have a sequel coming out with original director Joe Cornish and John Boyega as his character of Moses. So that's very, very exciting. That was the movie that introduced John Boyega to a lot of people. Really cool sci-fi movie. So that's exciting. Uh, Boyega said, it's been a decade since Attack the Block was released and so much has changed since then. I'm excited to see the heightened story. This heightened story, Return to the Streets of London. Moses has remained one of my favorite characters to play and then bring him back in a huge honor. So that's exciting. Check that out. We all love John Boyega. And this has been your Hollow News. The more Boyega, the better. <laughs> it's not really Star Wars related, but I'm just like, yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> no, it's it's not, but it's it, like you said, it's Boyega and that movie is what put him on the map. Yeah, yeah. I watched I watched Concrete Cowboy and that came to mind because he plays I just Alba's son in Pacific Rim 2. Oh yeah yeah. Which I haven't <laughs> seen that movie. I watched most of it. I think it was alright. It was just like oh, this could have been a really cool franchise. Why didn't they still Well I know they did a cartoon for the Pacific Rim for and Netflix. I have yet to watch that. Movie. Netflix is all about the cartoons though. for the like oh, the yeah. Godzilla one. Now the the Army of the Dead ones come in and and the, the second season of Love, Death, and Robots came out. So. <laughs> Love, Death, and Robots. It's like a is. anthology of sci-fi. Interesting. So just like short stories almost, but they're all animated. It's pretty cool. All right, maybe I'll check it out. I didn't know what that was. <laughs> There's one that's five minutes, <laughs> so it's like... I love it. They made that one for me. <laughs> uh, we have top five uh, moments from the first three episodes of The Bad Batch. I don't have anything written down. I can't remember <laughs> anything <laughs> happening in them. Um, <laughs> <Perfect. laughs> so, like, close. My number five is seeing Saw Guerrera. Seeing young <laughs> Saw Guerrera. I'm a huge Saw Guerrera fan. I wasn't until Rogue One. And even after Rogue One, I might not have been, but he just keeps showing up. That I, It's kind of like George Costanza in Seinfeld. Costanza! Now I'm like, I just want more Saw Gerrera. I hope he gets a spin-off show, voiced by the original voice and Forrest Whitaker. 
just <laughs> in the same episode just every line of dialogue is a different voice actor I'm really into uh, Saw Gerrera, so I'm going to go Saw Gerrera. Uh, this, that's on my list, too. I wasn't going to put a five, but uh, I might as well, uh, so we don't have to go over it. Yeah, it's just like, especially because it's like the young, it's the Clone Wars version of him, so he doesn't look like yeah. Forrest Whitaker yet, so it's just, it's nice to, to, uh, um, to see and he's like he he's aged a little bit right so it's just like oh wow so, so yeah, i loved it and it's to know that like oh the rebellion is already slowly growing and the empire the empire is only like a week old or two weeks old or however you want to say it so yeah i love that part so that's my number five as well awesome um great mom. my number four is the training sequence in the first episode where Tarkin was like, let's see what they can do. And they kind of kick kick butt in that. I, I really And the food fight. We're going to do a one-two punch of that also, the food fight. I like that uh, sequence. That's my number four. My number four is going to be Wrecker and Lula or Lula or whatever. <laughs> His stuffed rabbit. Oh. Uh, Lola. Uh, I thought that was really cool. Um, just because that's like, I feel like that's just, I know Filoni's not writing everything, but like Filoni's projects, they love to make to humanize these characters yeah. if they're yeah. aliens or clones or our our main cast. So it's always fun. I'm so disappointed that's not on my list. <laughs> uh, my number three, this is another one two punch, but it's seeing Kane and Jerris again and the end of the Clone Wars. I liked it. I liked watching it. I know people are upset that they changed it from that comic book that we showed last week, but. I liked it. I liked watching it, um, and it added to his characterization later on in Rebels, and it also kind of added a lot. It could have been any young Jedi, any Padawan, but they went with that one, and I liked that, and I liked seeing the end of... I loved, I like seeing that perspective of the ending of the Clone Wars. I love the return of uh, the clone cut that is like has his own family and what have you. Yeah, and yeah. He, I always like that episode in Clone Wars. And it's it's just nice to see the like, oh, by the way, we're like gonna bring and like knowing that we haven't seen Rex, but Rex has been mentioned and he's mm -hmm. on it seems like he's on the run or he's not he's he's up to something. So we we're like, Ooh, the, the, it was nice to see that and then just like uh like we said before, it's neat to see how the Empire is affecting every single planet. So Yeah, the way they the way their attention to detail in use of the story is mm -hmm. is it's unparalleled. Uh, my number two sniper guy killing everyone at point blank. Bam! You're dead. Bam! Yeah. Good soldiers follow orders. Bam! Bam! I'm like, yeah. What's his name? Meathead. Sniperhead. Sizzle Cross reel. Hair. Crosshair. Sizzle I love reel. his. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm bad with names. I call him TK20111987. <laughs> which... <laughs> That's my number two. Uh, my, my number two... <sighs> you know what? It's going to be that scene as well. I think I was going to put it as number one, but it's so dark, but it's just like... It's, it is pretty eye-opening. They're like... Because the first episode hints at like that crosshair will go that extra is like we have to finish the mission it's like no no it's like so the stakes are really high it seems uh and it's the foundation of how ruthless the empire is it's it's really interesting to see through the through using a clone to do it so good news my number one is kanan i don't <laughs> i definitely made a mistake somewhere so number three was kanan so number one What's your number? What's your number one? Maybe I'll piggyback. My number one is Kanan it! because it's sort of been the <laughs> the standout <laughs> so far. Like I don't, I don't want to say it's the like the first two minutes of the episodes have been the most exciting. It's just sort of like it stood out. Yeah, um, absolutely. And like everything else has been sort of like abstract. Like I could easily say like I love how interesting these uh, characters are right now. Uh just like how the bad batch is more like developed in three episodes and it's just like oh wow this is great uh and then omega is a very interesting character but yeah like that is just like wow it's great and just seeing it all work out and it it also is like the foundation of that series right it's like uh -huh. the whole idea that hunter's like trying to find the reason to f continue to fight or the father he wants to be this father figure or what have you 
Yeah. So that was obviously my number one, but I also wrote it down as number three because it was so powerful. Mm. So my number one is just seeing Comedianians again on the screen. <laughs> Huge fan of them. But I do like how they're like, no, we need to keep making clones to survive. And Tarkin's like, <laughs> mm, yeah, yeah. So I, I, act, I really, really like that dynamic and that storyline. And I'm very much intrigued to see where it's going to go. <laughs> That's my impression of Tarkin. Dantooine is far too remote. <laughs> <laughs> I could <couldn't> nasally. Yeah. <laughs> I'm excited uh, for the next episode. So let's see. yeah, I might watch it by the time we record next week. Ooh, yeah. uh, it's gonna be a lot of fun. I really, like, I do really enjoy the show. I'm looking forward to more of it, and um, can't wait. Maybe Omega is uh, is Phasma. <laughs> she's blonde and she's we all know if you're blonde that means you could be another blonde <laughs> she could also be Sindel yeah that's my that's my thing right there she could also be Brie Larson oh my gosh we just cracked alright this is episode 217 of the Rebel Scum podcast Rebel Scum podcast Rebel Scum you have anything else to say Nah. <laughs> All right, we'll wrap stay it up. Stay safe. Yeah, stay safe. All Thanks right. so much for uh, watching, listening, paying attention to us, YouTube, all that. Like, subscribe, yeah. give us a five star review on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, SoundCloud, iHeartRadio, Napster, whatever. You listen to <laughs> us. <laughs> We're everywhere. Um, and until next time, he's Brock. I'm James. And he was always scum. Rebel scum. Hey scumbags, thanks for watching. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up on our video. As always, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Rebel Scum Podcast, for all the latest videos.